Hello there, welcome back to a lover video. Well done you for getting this far. A big round of applause. Well done for getting to video number three. I'm not being sarcastic at all. I really appreciate you watching these videos. I think it's great that people are trying to learn things for free, you know, make the most of their time and be productive. So well done for watching this content. This is all for free, as mentioned, no registration is required. This is video three of four, and in this video, we're going to start looking at double entry bookkeeping. If you've joined this series here, then please go back and watch the previous two videos. So what is double entry bookkeeping? What is double entry bookkeeping? Double entry bookkeeping is simply a bookkeeping method, an accounting method to record the financial transactions of an entity. And as the name suggests, there is a double entry that takes place. So every single financial transaction that happens within an entity has to be recorded. And with double entry bookkeeping, we enter two recordings for every single transaction and that is a debit and a credit so for every single transaction that's entered for an entity there will be a debit and there will be a credit if this is going way over your head i do apologize i understand that this is brand new to a lot of people that are watching but please bear with me Please stick with this course, it will make more sense as this video goes on. So there's a picture on the screen here, a photo of a girl balancing a ball on her forehead. The reason why I've used that photo is debits and credits should always balance. We're always going to enter a corresponding credit for a debit and a corresponding debit for a credit. They balance each other out. Our total debits should always match and agree with our total credits because we are doing a double entry. Whenever there's a transaction, let's say for £500, there will be a debit posting, a recorded debit for £500 and a recorded credit for £500. They will always balance each other out. Now, the big question is how do you do this? And how do you know what's going to be a debit? And how do you know where and what is going to be the credit? Well, there's an acronym on the screen here, P-E-A-R-L-S, PEARLS. This acronym is for purchases, expenses, assets, revenue, liability, and sales. Now, if we were to draw a line and create the word P and then R-L-S, this side, these first three letters, are debits. Purchases, expenses, and assets are always entered as debits. Revenue, liability, and sales are always entered as credits. Are you confused? I really hope not. But if you are, let's bring up Excel, my favorite software in the world, and I'll demonstrate this a bit further. So over here, we have DR for debit don't ask me why but that's the way it's done in the accounting world dr for debit and cr for credit we have pea for debit purchases expenses assets credit is revenue liability and sales over to the left here i have a template where we can make note of the transaction we can enter a debit the account and the value and we can enter the credit the account and the value because with each debit, we have to post the debit to an account with a value. And then with every credit, credits, we have to post that to an account with a value. And these accounts will be purchase accounts, expense accounts, asset accounts, revenue accounts, liability accounts, and sale accounts. So let's go through some transactions. And hopefully this will make more sense as this video goes on. I mentioned this previously in, in, in a previous video. I do offer a much more extensive course called the Ultimate Bookkeeping Course 
Details are on my website, freebookkeepingaccounting.com. It's a lot slower pace than this. It goes through lots of examples. It will really help you understand bookkeeping, double entry bookkeeping more specifically, a lot better. Um, but, you know, just stick with this because it will make more sense as we go on. So let's take a financial transaction. Let's say someone has started a business and the owner has introduced capital. Let's say that he or she put a thousand dollars, a thousand pounds, a thousand euros, a thousand yen, whatever, into the business bank accounts. We have a transaction of capital introduced. Okay, so the owner has put one thousand pounds into the business bank account. So we have to have a debit and we have to have a credit to account for this transaction. Each has to have a value that equal each other and each has to be posted to an account. Well, money in to the business, so money coming in, we have an asset. The business now has cash, which is an asset. Think back to assets and what assets are. So A for assets, they can be things like cash, equipment, machinery, property, Money is coming into the business, so that is an asset which is on the debit side. So here we can record to the business bank account 500, let's just say it's 500 uh, pounds, whatever, into the business bank account. We've got our asset. We now need to record the credit. As mentioned about capital in the previous video, Capital is always owed back to its owners. So we have £500 asset into the business, but the business owes that money back to the owner. So it's a liability, and we can put that to the capital account. Liability is L here, which is a credit. So our first transaction, we have capital introduced. We have £500 into the bank account. £500 owed back to its owners. A for asset, which is the bank account. L for liability, which is the capital account. So we have an asset account and a liability account, a debit and a credit. They're both 500 That's our first double entry done. Let's do some more. So let's say there was a sale paid into bank. Okay, so let's say there's a sale of £50, $50, whatever, into the bank account. Money into the bank, money flowing into the bank is an asset. Cash is an asset. So we have our business bank on the debit side. A for asset, debit. Credit, sales. So credit, revenue, liability, sales. So we have a sales account of 50 they equal each other, 50 and 50. We have a debit and we have a credit. Let's say the business then pays out money for insurance. Okay, so we have insurance. And let's say this time it's 37 of whatever currency we're using. We have 37. Insurance is an expense. It's money out of the business. It's an expense. Where is expense on pearls? It's here with E. It's a debit. So we have an insurance account, which is an expense account. Expense accounts are debit. And then we have the money leaving the bank account, which is a credit. So with L for liability, you can also have this as leaving. So money leaving the business is a credit. And also we can use the L for liability. So business bank is the credit. You can see the value of our debits equals the value of our credits, which is what we want. If they didn't balance each other out, if they didn't equal the same, then we've made a mistake somewhere. And you can see we have an equal amount of credits as we do debits. So let's do some more. Let's say 
there was a business loan of 5,000. So we need a 5,000 debit and a 5,000 credit. And let's say it was paid into the business bank account. So what's the debit going to be? And what's the credit going to be? Have a think about that. Look at pearls here. We have purchases, expenses, and assets on the debit. We have revenue, liability, and sales on the credit. If you're confused, think about what a loan is. Is a loan a sale? Is it an asset? Is it a liability? Think about money into the bank. So we have cash coming into the bank. Is that going to be a sale? Is that going to be an asset? You know, what is cash? So have a think about that. You may get it completely wrong. Please be forgiving on yourself. If you do get it wrong, you're new to this. It's going to take time. So a business loan. Well, let's do the credit first this time. So a loan is a liability. We owe that money back. So here we can put loan. So we have a loan account as a liability account, which is a credit. And the money's being paid into the bank account. So with money flowing into the bank account, which is the opposite to leaving, which is a credit. And obviously the bank account is an asset account. So we can do business bank just here. And let's just do two more. Let's say we have another sale this time, paid into bank. Let's say it was 800. Let's do the, the uh, credit side again this time again. Um, sales, credit. S is credit. So we have a sales account. The debit, the money is going into the bank, which is the opposite to the L of leaving. And bank accounts are an asset. Cash is an asset. So we have business bank here. And let's just do one more. Let's say this time we paid the rent of 1500. What's the debit going to be? What's the credit going to be? Well, rent is an expense, which is E for debit. So we have a, a rent expense account, which is a debit account. And we have money leaving the bank, L leaving the bank for the credit. So we do business bank, we have money leaving. The best thing to do is to think of some transactions yourself and just think where the debit's going to be, where the credit's going to be. Obviously, use the comment section below. I do check YouTube about once a week, so it could take me up to a week to get back to you. But if you leave a question in the comment section, I will do my best to help you. But obviously, I've got lots more free content on my website. So if you need more content, if you want to learn more about this, then go to my website. My older bookkeeping course has more content than this one. So feel free to watch that as well. This is not the end of the course, though. Please continue with this course. There's one video left where we'll talk more about debits and credits and also how we can use these balances to create financial reports such as a profit and loss and a balance sheet. Speak to you in the next video.